I'm sitting down here with John Mitchell at The Brew in Traverse City, and we're going to talk about his book, which was published in 2011. But it's, it, 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 it's uh, got a lot of traction. It's still a bestseller in northern Michigan. Amy Reynolds uh, wrote me on her Christmas card. She said, your book has legs, which is a <laughs> good thing to hear from her. She's the manager, of course, of Horizon Books. Yeah, that's awesome. So a lot of people are interested in the Civil War. Your book is a lens into the Civil War and into life at Northern Michigan at that time. It is a story of the Civil War from a Grand Traverse perspective, if you're trying to get a quick description of it. Yes, it was, uh, I felt the local story, uh, not only the the great war scenes have been done. It isn't an attempt to re, to re uh, think or recapture battles, the big epic battles from any other perspective, but how northern Michigan kids were involved in them. And uh, I follow that all the way through, the, both the uh, view of the home front and it follows the war. And it, a lot, we did have a tremendous representation from this area during the Civil War. Our, uh, kids from this area, the young men that fought in the Civil War, were generally good hunters. They could load and fire a rifle fast. That was different from a lot of the immigrant uh, soldiers that were being drafted out of the city. So not only did Northern Michigan send a lot of both Native American and Euro-American kids to fight in that war, but they were often sent to the front lines because of their marksmanship and stealth they had learned in the woods, easily transferred to the front lines. For the most part, these were young people that were going through the Erie Canal and setting this area, settling this area, because you had to be young and tough to, to make it in northern Michigan. And then, of course, to so now you finished your your epic uh, Civil War story. You moved Thank on. You. To, I like you that moved on. To, you've moved on to fiction. Can you tell me about that? I'm just. It's. Uh, I went to. I was. A, I'm a Detroit boy. I went to Brother Rice High School in uh, Birmingham, Michigan, and one of my best friends still is from that time as a Peter a guy named Peter Leonard, himself a rising uh, novelist right now, a crime fiction novelist. It does run in the family in Peter's case. Peter is the son of Elmore Leonard. I've been in the history business most of my life. For 20 years I owned a architectural antique business in Sutton's Bay, a place called Villa Architectural Antiques. Pete has been encouraging me for 30 years to use that character to and indeed, that business brought me to tough inner city. I met with uh, Pete and Elmer Leonard for dinner last month, in mid-December. Actually, I've been writing a lot of this book down at the Detroit Institute of Art, where I spent last week, just to get a feel for Detroit as I'm writing it. And Elmer and Pete are pushing me to, to understand that writing fiction, writing history is a sort of a slave to chronological order and the truth. Whereas writing fiction is putting together good, one good scene at a time and hoping the conglomerations of scenes that you put together work for other people. It, it is, I'm having a lot of fun with it, I have to say that. It's different. <laughs>